Ben Mulroney speaks with the Vision Mate Partnership, the logo for the CNIB Foundation, Fondacion INCA. Hi, everyone. It's Ben Mulroney. I'm joined by Linda and Ashutosh. It's great to talk to both of you today. Thanks so much for making the time. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so one of the reasons, before we get into uh, the three of us talking, uh, we should um, talk a little bit about the Virtual Vision Mate program, um, because I think it's a really important uh, sort of launching point for this conversation. And both of you feel free to, I, I love you, bye-bye. Um, uh, both, both of you feel free to, uh, to jump in, because I'm sure you know much more about it than I do, but it just feels that um, right now we're living in a really interesting time for everyone, uh, whether sighted or partially sighted or blind. A physical distancing is really presenting a unique set of circumstances for everyone. And one of the easiest things I think people can do is to reach out, engage in conversation, offer support, and to combat the negative ramifications of isolation on Canadians with sight loss. What's, what's really interesting is the CNIB Foundation has adapted one of its core offerings the vision mate program to engage volunteers to connect virtually with participants either on phone online at least once a week so uh is there anything else that you guys want to add to that before we start our chat yeah Ashutosh? yeah linda would you like to start um i don't know what to say uh, well, that's all right. Well, why don't we just, why don't we just talk, why, why don't we, uh, you introduce yourself to me, Linda, because what I've learned is that you are a really active volunteer. Like you are not somebody who just sits, <laughs> sits around. You are, <laughs> you like to keep busy, don't you? That's true. Yes, I, I am busy all the time. So let's, let's, so you run the Trailblazers Tandem Bike Club, bingo nights at the Bayview offices. You volunteer for the CNID making satisfaction calls. You're a member of the Canadian Council of the Blind. Do you sleep, Linda? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny you should ask that, because everybody else asks me the same question. <laughs> so t talk to me about where Ashutosh fits into your life. Well, he comes once a week and assists me with any uh, computer work that I may need completing. Um, a lot of times I have to uh, either create a program or schedule or uh, keep track of databases or we attend uh, community fairs. We get people signing up who want to be involved with our club. And uh, I always uh, keep track of these uh, various projects. And Longhand is very difficult for me to see now with the low vision. So a vision mate is very helpful and convenient to allow me to stay this busy. I always been like this all my life. So having the vision mate makes a world of difference as well to my life. Ashutosh, how did you come into the orbit specifically of CNIB? Uh, generally of CNID and specifically of Linda. Oh, is Ashtosh, is he there or has, is he frozen? I think he might be frozen. Oh, there he is. Ashtosh, are you there? Yeah, yeah. somehow yeah. you could disconnect him. I don't know. Oh, no, that's okay. We're back. So, so tell me, how, how did you uh, join up with CNIB and how did you end up um partnering with linda so yeah basically i i'm i was new to canada like i, I just landed uh, in 2015 and after settling down with my job my house and all that I, volunteering has always been in my nature like back home also i was doing different kinds of volunteering though some were registered some were not so here uh, when I was, I wanted to do some kind of volunteering and then I was going through like, okay, where I can fit really well. Then I, going through internet, I heard about CNIB. And since I had a, a kind of personal experience, like my grandmother was blind, like she, she, she was unable to see. And uh, I, I was the one who mostly took care of her as, as a child. Like I was the one who used to do all her work and all that. So I had a connection there. 
I thought like, yeah, I, I think I can make a better understand. I have got a better understanding of that. And that's how, all, that's how I ended up contacting CNIB. And later on, I got a call from CNIB looking for basically my requirements for like something nearby my home so that I can give time to my family as well. And after work, I can go easily there and all that. So yeah, uh, CNIB then contacted me and told me about Linda. And uh, yeah, eventually uh, it was all confirmed and I met Linda. And yeah, I would like to really like I to tell you when I first met Linda and I heard about her everything, I was confused. Like, how is she managing that? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I, I would, in fact, I would learn many things from her. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I ended up uh, being a vision mate for Linda. Now, what, what's the biggest difference in terms of your interactions now uh, under the rules of the pandemic and quarantine versus before? So uh, to, to be very frank, uh, we are basically like most of the work I do for Linda is uh, it has like it needs to be done through papers and all that. So those things cannot be done virtually. So uh, but I do contact her on Mondays. And uh, we are postponing things for now mm. because of this pandemic. And obviously we both want to be safe and the rules and all that. So for now we are postponing it, but we go week by week, every Monday, normally, normally every Monday I call mm. her and ask about her. And uh, then we decide, okay, not this week, let's go. <laughs> let's think <laughs> about next week or let's think uh, 15 days from there. So that, that's how we are, we are in contact with each other right now. Uh, Linda, how would you describe the, the the program in terms of how it how it helps you from I guess a mental health perspective? I mean, if we're looking at this as something that helps uh, ameliorate feelings of isolation, do you feel it succeeds in that in that regard? Because I have so much work to do here at home, I kind of don't feel isolated. Um, I'm in all week. And I only go out once a week with my husband in a, for a car ride or something. But I don't go any into any stores or anywhere like mm. that. I'm a very high risk. So the the pandemic is sad. And, you know, we are isolated. But And I'm used to going out all the time. But I have enough work to keep me busy here at home. So I don't really worry about it. Mm -hmm. I um I try to contact friends that I know that need the phone calls and my children and friends and family. You know, I just cope with it day by day. Yeah, I I was interviewing a musician about a week ago and he said something that resonated with me which is uh, that we are um we are isolating, we are not isolated. That um, that if we if we strive for it, we can find just as deep, if not deeper, connections while in isolation than we had before. It's so true. That's an excellent uh, analogy. You know, with all the programs that are being offered out there by CNIB and other ends of CNIB. I don't think anyone has a chance to stay isolated. <laughs> I even get to play my bingo, my virtual bingo. <laughs> oh, do you really? Yeah. I would, hey, if you need somebody to call the bingo number numbers one day, you let me know because I would love to do that. You like bingo? I, well, I like being the guy who calls the numbers. <laughs> I like the person to play because I like winning. <laughs> <laughs> um. What would you tell, Linda, what would you tell uh, someone who might see this, this video who um, is, um, is dealing with um, uh, their own uh, personal journey through sight loss? What would you tell them if they are feeling feelings of isolation right now, if they are feeling like they, they are lacking those connections? I would first talk to them and get to know them and find out what their interests are and suggest or help direct them in a way that they could feel more independent, more, you know, uh, self-esteem or do things that makes them happy. I would really have to talk to them and find mm. out how they, 
surviving and what they're doing to help them along. That's a very good point. I mean, you have to start knowing the person. You can't prescribe them a solution until exactly. you know who they are. That's a very, yes. very good point. Um, listen, I want to thank you both uh, for chatting with me. Um, I think that when I first joined CNIB, I was a little overwhelmed with uh, sort of the mission that this organization has because I, 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 was, I, I tried to explain it to some friends. I said, imagine every aspect of your life, um, every, every single interaction that you have with the physical world. Uh, and then imagine that physical world not being designed for you. This organization tries to raise awareness about that and change that fact for those who need it. I, it it's, right. a, it's, 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 it's the most um, comprehensive job uh, of any organization that I can imagine. And, um, and so I want to thank you for talking to me because the way we want to end this was almost a call to action to anybody who's watching this that, um, just reminding people that with physical distancing measures in place, it can be really difficult for people with sight loss to do things like picking up groceries or prescriptions. And so we want to ask the people watching if they're willing to help CNIB would love to hear from you. Uh, together we can ensure our community stays connected and to learn more about volunteering as a vision mate or registering for a vision mate, please visit cnib.ca or call them at 1-800-563 2642. So to both of you, thank you so much for this chat. I hope that you stay happy and healthy and safe and sound uh, and all the best to you both. Well, it was nice meeting you, Ben. Thank you so much, Ben. Bye. Take care. Bye.